Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Dr. Abu Abdullah. <clears throat> Qualified, educated from International Islamic Universities in three faculties, Quran, Hadith, and Islamic class. My today's lecture is Muslim contributions to science. You may be surprised that what I'm talking about, Muslims and scientific contribution, how come? Because we see nowadays that Muslims are crippled everywhere. Your surprise, your ambiguity is absolutely right, but there was a time when Muslims were controlling, monitoring the whole, almost three-fourths of the world. And they were, they are still pioneers in science. So this is my first lecture on Muslims' contribution to science. So there are series of lectures which I'm going to deliver on this topic. So let's start. Muslims distinguish themselves not only as a theoretical scientist and scientific thinkers, but contributed through innumerable inventions to the growth of the modern science. Though the medieval Muslims had meager resources at their command as compared to those of the present age, they achieved a great deal. They replaced the old speculative method of Greeks with the experimentation method, which in later periods formed the basis of all scientific investigation. Now I will be discussing the inventions which are made by Muslims, invented by Muslims. Abul Hassan is a distinguished as an inventor of the telescope, which he described to be a tube, to the extremities of which were attached diopters. The pendulum was invented by Ibn Yunus a genius in science who lived in the reign of Aziz Billah and Hakam bi Amr Lillah, the Fatmi Khalifa of Egypt. The invention of the pendulum led to the measurement of time by its oscillations. His outstanding work, Sejwal Akbar al Hikimi, named after his celebrated patron, Hakim B. Amrila, was acknowledged to be the masterpiece on the subject, replacing the work of Ptolemy. It was translated into Persia by Umar Khayyam in 1079. The first watch was made by Kutubi a renowned watchmaker of his time. During the Abbasid reign, the use of a watch became quite common, and the famous Harul Rashid once dispatched a watch as a gift to his celebrated contemporary, the French Emperor Charlemagne. At the time, a watch was considered a novel thing in Europe and was regarded as an object of wonder. Mastansiria, the well-known University of Baghdad, had a unique clock with a dial, blue-like sky, and a sun, which continuously moved over its surface, denoting the time. Molana Shibli, the famous Urdu literator has described a watch of Damascus in the following words. The watch was kept in the door of a wall 
It contained copper plates and the twelve doors. There was an eagle standing in the first in the last plate. At the end of each hour, these two eagles lay down on the copper plate, and hence a sound was produced to show the time. At twelve, all the doors were closed. This system was being repeated continuously. The construction of water clock was also common in Islamic countries. <clears throat> the Arabs were skillful in construction of cleft dries and water clocks with automata, says a European writer. The invention of mariner's compass, which revolutionized seaborne commerce and ocean shipping and enabled the Arabs to roam over the stormy areas in quite of new lands and additional markets for their communities is essentially a contribution of the Muslims to the world of science. Knowing knowledge about the properties of the needle can no doubt be traced to Chinese sources, but putting it into working shape in the form of mariner's compass was the achievement of Muslim scientists. The compass was probably invented for the purpose of finding out the Qibla for Muslim prayer Salah. Mir Fatehullah Khan is known to history as the inventor of gun and gunpowder. The presumption that gunpowder was first made by Chinese doesn't stand the test of historical research. Writing in this book, Arab Civilization, the author says that gunpowder was a great invention of the Arabs who were already using guns. Guns were used by Arabs in 1340 AD in the defense of al Bashar when Frendols besieged it. The statement of Dr. Lebon about the invention of gunpowder by the Arabs is further corroborated by Mr. Scott in his well-known work History of Moorish Empire in Spain. <clears throat> it has been acknowledged by Joseph Hell in his book Arab Civilization that the distinct distinction of inventing photography photography goes to the Ibn Hashem who is not only credited with its invention but also its development. Muhammad Musa, a great scholar of geography, has the unique distinction of being the inventor of an instrument by which the earth could be measured. He also invented the astral lab. These novel instruments invented by him have been preserved in the Museum of Madrid, Madrid Spain. A unique instrument was invented by Abu Salat Umayya in 1134 AD, through which a sunken ship could be raised, which greatly helped in the salvage expeditions of medieval times. The credit for manufacturing soap goes to Arab chemists, who introduced it into the world. The first paper in Islamic country was manufactured in 794 AD in Baghdad by Yusuf bin Umar. The paper manufactured in Arab country was of superior quality than that made of in Europe. In the, mal, in the manufacture of cloth, Muslims particularly in Spain exhibited marvelous skills and tastes. Their woven cloth captured almost all the big markets of the world and was considered to be the finest as well as extremely durable. Al Musudi, who died in Cairo in 957 AD, 
may be called the Pliny of Arabs. In his celebrated work, The Meadows of Gold, he has described an earthquake and the first windmill which was also invented by Muslim. Giralda or the Tower of Seville was the first observatory in Europe. It was built in 1190 AD in the Spanish town of Seville under the supreme of the mathematician Jabber ibn Afia. <clears throat> it was meant for the observation of heavenly bodies. It was later turned into a belfry by Christian conquerors who after the expulsion of the Moors didn't know how to use it. Bold experiments and unique innovations in the field of mathematics were carried out by Muslim mathematicians who developed this science to an exceptionally high degree. Algebra was said to have been invented by the Greeks, but according to Olsener, it was confined to furnishing move. I'm sorry, it was confined to furnishing amusement for the place of the goblet. Muslim developed it and applied it to high purposes. They invented spherical trigonometry, discovered the tangent in the world first, to introduce the sign of arc in the trigonometric calculations. Zero is an invention, <clears throat> addition made to mathematical science by the Muslims. They have also shown remarkable progress in mathematical geography. The Muslims have made a lasting contribution to the development of medieval science. Razi, which is called in West, Razi's Ibn Sina, which is called in West as Avicenna, and the Abu Ali Hassan, which is called in West as Al Hazan, were the greatest medical scholars of medieval times. Al Razi was the inventor of Satan in surgery and the author of Al Juderi Wal Hasbek, the authenticated book dealing with measles and smallpox. Avicenna wrote Al Kanun, Jil Talib, known as Canaan, which was the most widely studied medical work of medieval times and was reprinted more than 20 times during the last 30 years of the 15th century in many different languages. Al Hazm was the world's greatest authority in optics and eye glasses. The contagious character of the plague and its remedies were discovered by Ibn Katina, a Moorish or mean Hispanic physician. Ibn Firnas is credited with making glass from stone. He had constructed his home as a sort of planetarium where one could see stars, clouds and even lightning. According to Hethi, Ibn Firnas was the first man in Arab history to make a scientific attempt at flight. His flying equipment consisted of a suit of feathers with wings. My dear friends, some of you may be surprised that is it really a Muslim contribution, but it's very easy for today. You can Google. With a little research, you can find it out. In America, where I live, I have seen nothing of Muslim contribution in any library of any school or anywhere. They have eliminated Muslims' contribution, not only in the science, but even in the history, in the wars which was fought in America. So, it's a lost chapter of Muslim history. So this was my first lecture and inshallah, one by one, the other lectures in contribution of Islam 
will be coming. Allah Hafiz.